What's going on there, guys? We back with another one, and we got to talk about Stephen A. Smith eviscerating the Memphis Grizzlies live on television today. Him and Kendrick Perkins had some choice words for those guys. Uh, all the talking and everything has come to an end, and there's nothing to show for it. And, you know, they've been humble. So we'll see where they go from here. And we also got Steph and LeBron talking about their rivalry. And the reason these things tie in together is – You look at who eliminated the Grizzlies and you look at who the Grizzlies thought they were about to dethrone and that was Steph and those guys and who's actually the real rival. LeBron and Steph has faced in four finals. These guys are two of the most decorated players of all time. They both have four titles. Four. And so in a lot of ways, this is the race to five. You know, so this is very significant in the quest of, I mean, you could make an argument whose error this is if Steph wins, you know, if Steph wins this title or LeBron, whose error is it more? You know what I'm saying? Because you got Duncan and Kobe, they both won the same amount in their errors at least. But if Steph or LeBron gets the upper hand with this one. This is like a one up. Now, this wouldn't be for the championship, obviously, but they would advance and you have to feel like them tuning up against each other may give them an edge in the next series. We're going to check out what they had to say and I'll be back with my commentary. They look like damn jokes. They were an embarrassment. And I don't say that kindly and I don't say that with any joy in my voice or in my heart. I don't wish that on them. I wish for an epic seven-game series, to be quite honest with you. Uh, But they didn't lose. They got their ass kicked. That's number one. Number two, let's point this out. Dylan Brooks said, I don't respect, I poke bears. I don't respect anybody that don't give me 40. Well, LeBron didn't give you 40. But his team gave y'all 40. As in a 40-point loss in a closeout game six. A series in which Dylan Brooks, I want to make sure I got this right. I got this I got this stat right right here because I'm looking at Dylan Brooks here. In six games, he averaged 10 points and three rebounds on, on, on 23% shooting from three-point range and 31% from the field. He's lucky if he's in a Memphis Grizzlies uniform next year. So that's number two. Number three, the superstar that is John Moran, albeit hurt and what have you. You did say you good in the West. Well, evidently that wasn't true. When you were asked to admit it, you couldn't. Once it was clear, you shouldn't be good in the West. And then in the midst of all of that, we're sitting there, and it's not me. I, I hope John Moran is watching. It ain't me, John Moran, because you lost, and I got it, and it wasn't your fault. You understand? At least not totally. Okay, you didn't have Stephen Adams. You didn't have Brandon Clark. But when you down 40 and you a superstar in this league and you're seen while you're down 40 laughing on the bench, it reeks of everything that says, I got my back. You didn't think the cameras were watching? You didn't think the cameras were on you seeing that? That's the look. So if I'm the Memphis Grizzlies, they're a laughing stock right now. They're all talk and bluster and nothing else. They got embarrassed. And it is what it is. And they're going to have a long offseason because ain't nobody going to let them forget that. When we think about the Memphis Grizzlies two years ago, we were actually praising the whole organization for us, how they drafted and was building from the ground up and how this young team was on the rise. So they was taking steps forward. This year they took 10 steps backwards. Forget the postseason. Let's talk about the regular season because I feel like we need to actually address this when it comes down to them with their culture. You're not gangsters. You're not goons. You're basketball players. Um, Puts in the work. When you put in the work, nine times out of 10, you're gonna see results. And uh, uh, he's done that throughout his whole entire career. And uh, I had nothing but the utmost respect for enough for Steph um, and everything he's been able to accomplish, not on the floor, but not only on the floor, but also off the floor too. it's great to have people like that in this league uh, that can set an example for, for, the, for the generation to come. Well, Brian, in what ways do you think you and Steph have brought out the best in each other given all those matchups? Uh, just 
two of the most competitive players that's ever played this game. Um, and we want to, you know, etch our name in the history books as much as we can, you know, but playing, you know, doing it our own way. So, you know, like I said, I got nothing but the greatest aspirations, the greatest respect and stuff. For someone who appreciates the history of the game, you're going to take on LeBron, the Lakers, for the first time in this run. How much do you relish the moments of taking on LeBron again and taking on the Lakers in this next round of the playoffs? It's amazing because you're still you're still in the fight. It's better than the alternative of you know on the outside looking in and you know having been down 0-2 in this series. Like nothing's guaranteed. You don't take anything for granted, and uh, it is special to know. You know, from the first series we played him in Cleveland, 14-15, or 14-15 season to to now, um, you know, we're blessed to be playing at this at this level still, and excited about a new chapter. Um, two teams trying to you know keep your season alive and, and chase a championship, and that's what it's all about. So I agree with what Stephen A. and Perkins said, you know, this team, they spoke a lot, and Dylan Brooks may not be back. You can hear from Dylan Brooks' exit interview. It doesn't sound like he's confident that he will be back next year. I mean, you heard tra- like rumblings of trades throughout the year. They were trying to get Ananobi. Uh, who was the other name? They, they had, like, other names like that coming up throughout the year, and they wanted to upgrade their roster significantly, but they were unable to do that, and here we are, you know, first round exit. And that's why it's not good to talk about the dynasty you already created before it was created. But um, I say that to say the real rivalry is about to take place. And Steph and LeBron, that's why they're able to drown out that noise of like the Grizzlies. They know it steps to it. You know, you could be great all you want. There's some luck. You have to have team camaraderie. All of that, and you have to have a truly great player. John Morant is a good talent. He's not a leader right now to the level that it would take to reach that championship level. And also, you know, he needs to rid himself of those plays where he's trying to jump over AD's head, over LeBron's head, because you can miss significant time attempting those low percentage plays you know the the most that can happen is you get two points and ignite the crowd out of that the worst that can happen though is you could be out for a season or two if you land the wrong way and or your career could be over you know so looking at that i i think they have a lot of things to figure out in this offseason ja is going to be the leader of this team i mean mm, that's gonna be that's going to be tough with what he's already established. Now he has to pick up the pieces, though, and show that, hey, I'm going to do it a different way. But he has to leave that whole gangster persona alone. And I'm glad that Kendrick Perkins elaborated on that some, that, that they aren't that. Now, hearing Steph and LeBron talk about each other, you could see, you know, there's respect right there. They are the two of this era that are who they are. You know, it's... Steph, LeBron, and then everything else is under that. You know, at one point, Kawhi had a chance to get up there on that level, but his injuries has taken him down. But he was playing at that level at one point. Um, KD hasn't led his own team, so I, I just can't consider him that way. People would say he was the best player on the team with Steph. I can't give him that either. Um... And some people may feel differently, but I just know what my eyes saw. And my eyes saw Steph win another title after KD left and win finals MVP. KD was playing under the shield of the Golden State Warriors system. So, yes, if if he's able to accentuate his great qualities with a phenomenal team around him, yes, KD is going to score the most points and win finals MVP. But when you put them in standalone situations, if you put Steph on on Golden State and you put KD uh, with Russell Westbrook and OKC, you saw who came out victorious. And yes, I am very familiar with Clay's explosion in that series to save the series. I'm very familiar with it. But Steph, you know, in Game 7, closed them out. Um, and... and 
he came out victorious over them. So there's no way I can just say that KD is a better player. So I can't put him on that level. My point is, in totality, that LeBron and Steph are fighting. This 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 series is another snapshot in their ongoing rivalry. And what I will say is we are blessed to see these guys compete in their primes a little bit past their primes, but still at a high level. Well, LeBron's past his. Steph is still in his. Steph is playing better ball than ever because he's a lot physically stronger than he was when he lost to them in the finals. But when I see these guys playing at this level, we're blessed as basketball fans to be able to see this because I think about how Dwight Howard and those guys, and I still haven't forgiven Hedo Turkoglu and Rashard Lewis for beating LeBron in the Cavs and messing up our Kobe-LeBron finals. You know, Kobe, when he came into the league, you know, Jordan was still winning, but then Jordan retired, came back to the Wizards, and, you know, he wasn't the same. So they were never able to compete in the finals. It's rare that you get to see, you know, top 10, top 20 all-time players facing off in the finals. So if you get to see it this many times, it's it's been a treat every time. Now, what I will say is there's no Golden State Warriors with KD. Clay is a little bit older. Steph's a little bit older. LeBron's a little bit older. But LeBron is going into the war with AD, and Steph has Clay. So the playing field in some people's minds is more um, even. You know, uh, a lot of people said LBJ had a big three with Kyrie and Kevin Love. And yeah, I mean, you know, he kind of picked that team. But Steph, Clay, and KD, that was a different level of talent, you know. When you start talking about, um, you know, you match KD and LeBron, but Clay, I felt like Clay was significantly better than, you know, Kevin, what Kevin Love is. And I feel like, you know, Steph, Kyrie can play really good against Steph, but I don't feel like he was ever Steph as far as leading the team or anything like that. But beside LeBron James, yeah, they can match up really well. And Kyrie can get the best of it with what he's required to do on a team that has LeBron James. Is Kyrie go out, score, go out, do your isolation. You know, we'll cover defensive mistakes, do all that. If you could do all that and lead, but Kyrie can just use his tool bag, then yes, he can look better than anybody. But like I said, Steph is the culture. You know, he, he is the guy for, turn like he turned around the Golden State Warriors, and I remember Monte Ellis saying when Steph came in the league, he don't know how he could play with him. And the Golden State Warriors was looking at like, okay, fine. You don't have to, but you can go. We're not trying to accommodate you. We we bringing Steph in. So, um, yeah, man, I could talk about this all day. I'm ready to see this series. I think it's going to be great. Uh, these guys are going to be vying for – like this series, put it like this, this series – means so much to both of these guys and don't let them tell you different they will be trying to win this series because it's going to be a notch under their belt uh let me know what you think though man who y'all got in this series golden state or the lakers i want to know in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe until next time peace